Today we'll be looking at two of the most infamous roller coaster scenes in all of pop culture. I'm of course referring to the roller coaster scene in Final Destination 3 and in the TV show 911. This video will be specifically looking at the events depicted in both scenes and comparing them to what would be possible on a real roller coaster. Due to copyright reasons, I will only be showing small clips from both. So if you've never seen the full scene or movie before, I recommend watching them first if you want the full context for each clip. Let's get started. Starting with the restraints in Final Destination 3. In the beginning of the clip, we can see that they are some kind of automatically lowering restraint, and we're shown what appears to be some kind of flimsy hydraulic system that's locking the restraints placed under the train. The real roller coaster that this was filmed on, Corkscrew at Playland in Vancouver, Canada, featured a simple ratcheting over the shoulder restraint design like shown in this animation. These work by having a redundant pair of pins alongside a toothed piece of metal behind the seats. These pins are in the locked position automatically and require some kind of outside pressure, this case in the form of a foot pedal, to unlock. When these restraints are unlocked, they must be pushed open with some amount of force, meaning they won't just fly open as seen later in the clip. Some roller coasters do use hydraulic restraint systems. These function very differently than the one shown in the movie though. These are self-contained systems that consist of one or more hydraulic solenoids that are locked electrically. Much like the previous system, they are locked by default and require some kind of outside electrical input to unlock. Let's move on to the lift chain, because I know if I don't mention it, there'll be some kind of comment about it. The movie shows the lift chain shutting off after the train reaches the top of the lift hill. On most roller coasters, this does not happen. Instead, the chain will slow to an idle, as starting and stopping electric motors causes a lot of wear and tear. However, with this specific ride, the chain actually did stop between trains. So the movie actually gets this right, and the commenters get this one wrong. Let's move on to some more important topics. Loose articles. They do pose a serious threat to riders on real roller coasters, but not for the reasons shown here. There have been several cases of loose articles like phones and cameras falling and landing in just the right spot where they're hit by a roller coaster train or its wheels. This pretty much just leads to the destruction of the loose article, and rarely anything else. It would be very bad if roller coaster trains had equipment under them that, if broken, caused the restraints to unlock and so roller coasters are not designed in this way. In an absolute worst case scenario, there is a chance that the loose article gets lodged into part of the train or wheels that causes the train to slowly come to a stop somewhere on the ride layout or valley. Loose articles are much more of a concern for other riders who may be hit by them rather than anything else. Now let's look at the ride's wheels. In this scene, you can see them flying off with nothing other than a simple bolt holding them. Real roller coasters have cotter pins installed on each wheel axle to act as a backup to the primary method of securing the wheel. Some rides are even more complex than this, with more systems. In any case, it's still possible that a wheel completely falls off during the ride, although rare, especially if a backup system like a cotter pin is not installed. This was the case for the 1998 accident on Demon at Six Flags Great America, where the ride got stuck upside down due to this happening. If a wheel does fall off a roller coaster, the resulting friction will likely lead to it stopping not long after, rather than derailing as shown in the film. Next, let's talk about how the cars are connected together. Real roller coasters use the same type of coach couplings as shown in the movie to connect one car to another, although real ones are usually a little bit larger. But in real rides, they also feature a backup chain or cable to ensure that cars stay connected even in the event of a major failure. Even if they were to become disconnected somehow, there's still minimal risk to riders. To round out everything wrong with the scene from Final Destination, let's talk about this piece of fiberglass that randomly breaks off the train. Fiberglass on real roller coasters is intentionally very light. If something like this were to happen on a real ride, it would fall to the ground, causing minimal damage. It would not be able to cause significant damage to the track, as shown in the film. Track damage in general is something that's quite hard to have happen, and there's been no recorded accidents as a direct result of steel coaster track damage. The track is made of hardened steel that has to put up with hundreds of thousand pound trains running over it every day, as well as withstanding the elements being outside all of the time. It's seriously strong stuff, and fiberglass is not going to bend it. So that's about everything I could pick out of Final Destination 3. Let's move on to an even less realistic example in my opinion the roller coaster clip from the Fox TV show 911. 
Unlike Final Destination, this show presents the events within as realistic interpretations of actual events, but in this case that could not be any further from the truth. So at the beginning of the clip, we see the ride operator struggling to secure the lap bar of this roller coaster on the riders shown. In this, we can see that this ride features a single lap bar for both riders that appears to only lock in one position, meaning that this is an ASTM Class 2 restraint. This can only be found on very tame rides, such as the actual ride that this was filmed on. By its design, it's not very secure and does not feature any kind of redundancy. ASTM sets strict limits on the g-forces riders can experience on a ride with Class 2 restraints. You can see those limits on this graph, and I've made other videos explaining this further. In the next part of the scene, we can see the ride experiencing strong enough g-forces that one of the riders is flung out of the ride, so this could not legally exist in pretty much every state in the US. But in the next clip, we see that not only does the ride feature a loop that's somehow taller than the first lift, but also the train has come to a stop exactly in the middle of it for some unexplained reason. As discussed when talking about Final Destination, there's no way for this to really happen unless several other rare contributing factors line up just right. Accordingly, this has only happened to real roller coasters a handful of times, and in all those situations, the rider's restraints functioned exactly as designed and the riders remained secure until they could be rescued or the train moved. Obviously, this giant loop where the train randomly stops in makes for better TV than just having riders walk safely down a catwalk on a brake section, but it's more important to understand just what's possible and what's not. Doing some research on this scene, it was based on news headlines the director claimed to have read every summer about supposedly unregulated roller coasters getting stuck upside down and people getting rescued, or people being flung out of roller coasters. In my opinion, they failed to cover this with any realism, even on the first responder side, which is a whole different topic that perhaps I may cover sometime. If you want to learn more about what actually happened in the few examples of real roller coaster accidents, then check out my What Really Happened series. Thanks for watching this episode of Theme Park Nonsense. If you have a video or article you would like to see reacted to in this series, please submit it to the link in the description. As always, thank you for watching and see you next time.